Hey guys, it has been a while since I have told you a story. No, I'm not Olin Rogers. Could you imagine though? the prowess. Now it's June and June is a really important month for me with my aerial fitness journey. A year ago in June I first started properly taking aerial fitness classes and this week was the first time I've been able to go back to class at the gym in months. If you guys didn't see when the whole lockdown stay at home situation first happened my husband and I literally built a homemade aerial rig in our backyard so that I could practice aerial stuff on the silks he got me for my birthday at home. But man, do I need guidance and a schedule and leaving the house and someone telling me what to do <laughs> to really get stuff done. Also, we did not consider the fact that we were building our rig in March and Michigan doesn't really have the best weather in the early spring time. <laughs> and wearing like seven layers while you're trying to go exercise outside isn't the easiest thing. Self-motivation is hard. So with these awesome aerial related milestones all converging on this point of my life, I thought it could be really nice and just sit down and talk about how I got to where I am now. One, so that I don't forget it because I am terrible about remembering just things in general, but like points in my life, I know they happened, but if I don't record it in some way, it kind of just slips away. I'm like, yeah, that happened. You know what I'm saying? So I want to be able to remember my journey thus far, but I also figured Ariel is just really fun and exciting and different and just a form of exercise that not everyone has heard about and sharing my experience with it with you guys might help some people be like, hey, that circus craziness is something I might like to try or just inspire you to find something that you might like to try because with quarantine, I feel like just fitness in general is in a really weird situation spotlight. We're like, all really aware that we need exercise because being extra sedentary really shows you what you're missing. But also we're all kind of searching for something we can do and enjoy consistently and do at home and not have to leave the house for it and not interact with people with. So we're all thinking about it more than we normally do. I don't know, this is just, this is just a different kind of fitness you can consider for yourself, I guess. I think it's super fun. A couple important things to consider right off the bat. Everyone's experience with fitness is going to be different. Everyone's relationship with exercise in general is going to be different. I eat a lot of homemade meals. I enjoy vegetables and we try to do balanced meals most of the time. So generally I think my body is getting the fuel it needs to do awesome active things. Someone who is not feeding their body properly might have a harder time with things. Another thing to consider, I have a natural inclination for wanting to climb things. <laughs> I came out of the womb a monkey. Like at three years old, I was climbing door frames. I was swinging from tree branches. General ninja-like behavior has always been near and dear to my heart. So I have a whole lifetime of, en of enjoying that style of activity to kind of aid me in trying this new form of fitness. I think this is very important to point out because if someone else wants to try it and it's not like as easy for them as it was for me initially or their timeline is different or like some things are much harder but they still enjoy it but it's not as quick, I just, I want people to consider that we all come from very different places and to judge yourself off of your situation, not my situation. And in the spirit of representing that properly, I'm not going to start at June a year ago when I first started taking classes. No, we are going back to the beginning. Everything active I've done since I was three years old so you can properly understand where I'm coming from and my journey and the influences that have shaped my personal story with this. So. Once upon a time, there was little tiny Heather. As aforementioned, she loved climbing things. She loved tumbling and trees and swinging. She was a crazy little bundle of energy and her parents knew it. Being the amazing, wonderful parents they are, they gave her an outlet for this energy. From when I was around three to when I was probably 12 years old, I had the privilege of going to gymnastics classes. I loved gymnastics so much and it taught me so much. I learned how to fall thanks to gymnastics. Honestly, one of the greatest skills you can have in life, knowing how to fall properly, 
If you're a parent and have a child, I 100% recommend sending them to gymnastics if only that they can learn to fall properly. You gain so much bodily awareness and can avoid so much injury. Just something I would recommend to everyone if it's possible. But yeah, I learned a lot in gymnastics. I was an active little kid. By the end of it, I could do a pullover on the bars. I could do handstands. I could do a front handspring. At one point, I could do a back handspring. I could even do a backflip at some point. I wish I could still do that. Maybe we'll get back to it. I could do a cartwheel and a round off on the balance beam. Balance beam was a weird one for me. Like it's very fun feeling like you're really balanced and like grounded and like super in control of your body. But it's also kind of terrifying doing things on a beam because you just like, you have to really trust yourself. <laughs> and that's hard sometimes. <laughs> but yeah, gymnastics was great. That first period of my life where I was, you know, learning control of my body, building muscles, creating a relationship with exercise in general. The foundation of this relationship for me was very much exercise is fun and you can do cool things. And I just really enjoyed it. I also love to play like cops and robbers with our neighbors and my siblings in the yard. So like that was just another way, you know, exercise was fun. And we had glorious battles with our other neighbors where we would, we would have our stick swords and our mud bombs and we would, we would battle each other's bases. <laughs> and <laughs> you know, they were just beautiful fights and wars and we had so much fun. So yeah, I never thought of exercise as a chore. It was always, it was always something fun you did with your friends or you did with your family or you did by yourself to entertain yourself and be cool. I don't know. <laughs> then little Heather grew a bit older and she had to go to high school. I know, tragic tale. Who wants to get older? I did not, but it was happening anyway. <laughs> at this point, I had stopped going to gymnastics because I was kind of at the level where to go any higher, you would have to start like going to things on Sundays and stuff. And at that point, my family didn't do sporting things on Sundays. And I didn't see the point in continuing if I wasn't gonna keep learning and getting better. So I wasn't going to gymnastics anymore. Also, when you're in high school, you don't typically play cops and robbers with your friends anymore. At least, not nearly as regularly as you do when you're young. And you have less time for all-out wars with your neighbors. I did, however, have a fun replacement in the sport of soccer. Now, because my youngest sister had started doing soccer, me and my uh, sister closer in age had started doing soccer, rec soccer, in eighth grade. So I had a year of experience. <laughs> and with this year of experience, I joined the girls' varsity soccer team and was a starter. It sounds impressive when I say it that way, but we were a very small school. The varsity soccer team was the only soccer team. And just being generally athletic was enough to get me a starting spot. I didn't have to know too much. <laughs> but over the four years I played in high school, I definitely developed some better technique. I was midfield. I loved the support position. You run up and you help your forwards and you pass the ball to them and they score. Or you run back and you help your defense and you get in the way of those folks trying to score on you and you save them and you get the ball back forwards. I did a lot of running. <laughs> oh, how I could run. These legs, they uh, <laughs> they could use some some more running nowadays. I just I just really enjoyed the whole teamwork aspect of things and working together and feeling feeling like an essential part of the team. And so my relationship with exercise continued. And yeah, exercise was still something that you did to enjoy yourself and have a good time and keep your body strong. And as time progressed, Heather got even older as you do. <laughs> and off I went to college. Now let me tell you something about college. Especially if you go away to a different state for school and you leave nearly all the family and friends and locations and situations you knew behind. College can be a time for you to really figure out like who you are, who you want to be without those expectations and like pressures that you felt your whole life weighing down on you. And that is so what college was for me, especially my freshman year. Running out of battery. We're gonna pause. We're talking about college. And we're back. One of these days I'm gonna learn how to just talk for a really long amount of time and not have to rely on jump cuts. But this is what it looks like. I just have those really long pauses in between because I my words, they don't come quickly. <laughs> okay, so like I was saying, college, freshman year especially, my main focus was on figuring out like how I wanted to present myself to the world and just spending time with my friends. So in like fitness related ways, that could be 
playing football out in the field with the guys. Which I did break my toe during. Or like playing indoor soccer when it's all snowy outside, but you, you just all want to get together and play in the gym. But at this point, I didn't really have a consistent source of exercise anymore. I took like the one fitness class that you're required to take, but uh, that does not count. Yeah, and so while I still loved doing active things, I just wasn't doing as much of it because I didn't have something specific in my life that was like, hey, you're gonna be doing this like I had with soccer. And you just don't have as much time to play outside when you're in college. Like literally, my time was for my friends. We would watch movies and play Halo and do random sports things outside. And I would do my homework the night before it was due or the morning it was due <laughs> and get good grades because I've been a lifelong procrastinator and it is a skill I have honed. <laughs> is that something you want to tell the internet? Maybe no? No, that, that was how I approached school. I cared very much about getting good grades, but the way I have trained myself did not require a large time commitment on my part. <laughs> and guys, do you know what happened next? Heather fell in love. Yes, something she did not plan for. In high school, she decided she was going to be a teacher. It was a job she could commit her whole life to and just throw herself into her work. Because she didn't ever see herself getting married. Not because she thought she was incapable of love, but because planning her life around getting married is not a wise thing to do. But yes, she fell in love and now she had to rethink her life. If Heather was to get married, she wanted a family one day. And she wanted to homeschool that family because she was homeschooled as a small child up through eighth grade and it was a great thing for her. That was an opportunity she wanted her children to have. And so Heather did not want to spend the rest of her school getting a degree she was only going to use for maybe five years and then never use again. Because if you think about it, the hours for teaching and the hours for homeschooling kind of conflict. I do video stuff now instead. It worked out great. It's much more do it from home a bowl. Yeah, no, so I got married and then that's another big life change. So when you're married and living in your own house, you don't have the same easy access to all of your friends and all of the activities you were doing before. The only exercise I was really getting at this point was like going for walks through the park with my husband or playing Pokemon Go with him as we, you know, skateboarded all across the town. But this was even more infrequent because when you're a grown up, then you gotta have a job and you gotta do that job and you don't have as much time for all the fun things. And I wasn't really thinking about, oh, I should be getting more exercise because in my brain, you know, exercise was just equivalent with fun. And it was just like, oh, I'm just not doing as many of that sort of fun things. I didn't think about the fact that your body functions much better when you get more exercise, you know? So long story long, three and a half, four years into being married, I got to the weakest point of my life. My husband is awesome and loves doing projects around the house. So I was helping him with one. We were moving a very heavy thing. It was either downstairs or upstairs. I think it was downstairs. And it was so difficult. Now being able to help with things around the house and being a generally sort of handy person is very important to me. I am my father's firstborn child. My dad's a computer programmer, so he's not the handiest person in the world. Like he's not out in the workshop building a birdhouse or anything like my grandpa does. But it was still very important to me from a very young age that I be able to help him with things around the house like I envisioned a son would do. I don't know. Just a little backstory on why this affected me so much. So my husband and I get to the bottom of the stairs. We're done, we're carrying this super heavy thing into the basement. My fingers, like I had, I was like losing grip on this. I had almost dropped this thing. We get to the bottom of the stairs and I get so lightheaded. I have never felt this way from carrying something heavy before. Like I blacked out, I could not see. So I like, I get into the old, you know, the head between the knees, get the blood flowing sort of situation so I don't pass out. And I just felt so weak. And that just got me thinking. I was like, I cannot rely on my body to do the things that I have always loved to do and that are important to me to be able to do. I haven't been using it, so it has gotten weak. It just really hit me like you are not taking care of the physical side of yourself and that is an important side of yourself. I had to find a solution. Now, as I mentioned before, exercise has always been highly tied to fun for me. I am not the sort of person 
who will go to the gym and run on the treadmill for a half hour and lift weights for another half hour. That just sounds horribly boring and does not make me feel cool about myself. But as an adult, you also don't have the time to just play with your friends in a field for hours, so you gotta figure something out. Your body needs to move and you need to find a way to move it. So first, my thoughts went to gymnastics because that was something I had done before as a child, and I was like, um, maybe they have adult gymnastics classes. That would be really fun. I'd like to be able to do a backflip again. So I searched, and alas, I found nothing. But then, one day, some YouTuber I watched posted a I Try Aerial Silks style video. And I watched this video like, oh my goodness, this is the thing those people at the circus do. This is the thing those people at the Renaissance fairs do. It's so cool. It looks like so much fun. There are gyms you can go to to learn this? Needless to say, I was intrigued. My first searches for something like that in my area did not turn anything up, and I was sad, and I stopped thinking about exercising for a little while. Then, after a little time had passed, a friend shared with me a taster class for aerial silks that we could go to together. And I was like, yes, I want to do this thing. So me and a few friends went to this taster class where I got to try climbing a silk for the first time, uh, tying a footlock and doing that little bouquet pose for the first time. And I loved it so much. They, however, did not have any openings in their upcoming silk swarm class. And so, I was not to start classes at this point. That was the fall, and now the spring comes around, and across my Facebook feed comes an ad for a different gym. A gym dedicated specifically to aerial-related things. Not only silks, but also hoop and hammock, which is really just silks but tied the opposite way. And then pole, they had all the things. Well, some of the things. There are actually many more styles of things than that, but like the main things that I knew existed and know exist. <laughs> And so I dragged my husband to, with me to one of their intro classes. It was half acro yoga and half aerial stuff. And it was so much fun. It was in this beautiful airy space and everyone was so encouraging and lovely. I just really, really liked it. Now I was thinking about this more and more seriously. I really wanted to do this thing, but I, I couldn't quite make the plunge to get a membership quite yet. So I dragged a friend along to another intro class. <laughs> and she did great, and I did great, and we had so much fun, and I was just... I was really realizing that this was something I was hooked on. I wanted to do more of this. And so in June, I bought my membership, and my gym does memberships a great way. It's not like you buy one class and you go to a certain number of classes. It's you buy your membership and you have access to all the classes you can go to in a month. And you better believe I went to all the classes I could go to. I started going to Silk Swan classes. I started going to Hoop One classes. I started going to Hammock classes. I tried one pole class and decided it was incredibly painful and difficult and would wait until I was stronger to go do that. <laughs> and I just started going. And I loved it so much. This provided me something with structure and a schedule so I didn't have to figure out what exercises to do or when to do them, I could just go to class and be guided through something, which for something like this was exactly what I needed. And it was something I really, really enjoyed and just thought was so fun and made me feel so cool. This is my gym. I dressed for this video, but then I was very cold, so. So yeah, I'm not as strong as I was three months ago before the whole quarantine isolation thing happened, but I feel so much stronger now, so much more capable and just able to do things that I like to do. I'm more flexible, which reduces your risk of injury in a bunch of things, I'm pretty sure. And I think I'm just overall healthier too. Like I don't think I get sick as easily and I don't think I get fatigued as easily. So just in general, exercising has been good for me. Look at these guns. <laughs> I think I don't I don't think you can really see him now, but like, I was starting to get abs too. You use your core a lot. And I've got a bunch of videos kind of covering from then to where I am now. So let's go watch them.
All right, so I just got done editing and realized I never filmed an outro. So just thank you guys so much for joining me on reminiscing how far I've come with Ariel stuff and just looking forward to all the cool things I'm gonna be able to do in the future. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on just exercise and its relationship with fun and all this sort of things in general in the comments. I love talking to people, it's so much fun and man, I just need more ways to engage with fellow human beings right now. So like, if you could help me out with that, that'd be great. <laughs> I'm supposed to tell you to hit the like button, that's what people on YouTube do, so do that, I guess, if you want to, you don't have to. But if you do want to subscribe and come on more journeys with me as we just have a good time in life, honestly, that's really what I'm filming here, I feel like. That'd be cool too. Love you guys, and see you next time.